Well, hey there, friends. Welcome to Growth Reframed. Whether you're listening to us over on YouTube or wherever you get your audio podcast from, we are so thankful you're here. Today, we are going to talk about intentional parenting. And this has been on our heart a lot recently because we are the parents of two younger children, and it is hard to be an intentional parent a lot of the time. But we believe it's truly worth it, so we wanted to dig into that a little bit more today with all of you. Yeah, I'm so happy we're getting into this topic because I often tell people, uh, especially even people with kids or people that don't have kids, that I fail at being a parent more than I feel like I fail at anything. Like mm. I, it's it's a it's a constant battle. It's a constant struggle. And a lot of times from the outside looking in, people can be like, oh, well, you're such a great parent. Like from what I see, you know, there's this, you're doing a lot of things amazing. And I don't want to take too much away from it because it is a difficult job. Like if you're a parent, you're doing an amazing job just by the nature of, you know, keeping your kids alive on a daily basis and all the other things that you don't get thanked for nearly enough. But I just, I say that because I know that I feel personally like I fail the most in that area. Like, well, certainly I fail a lot in our marriage and Matt could speak to that. That's another episode. <laughs> uh, definitely in my career, there's, there's failures, there's short, short points, but it seems to me that it comes up way more often when it comes to parenting. And it's it's one of the things that I believe you have to be almost the most intentional about, but it's the easiest thing to not be intentional about, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think that I, too, have the opinion that I struggle the most or I fail the most at parenthood. Of course, like you said, there are a million other areas of my life where I definitely make mistakes and definitely fail. but consistently, I feel like, gosh, I'm a terrible mother a lot more than I say, gosh, I'm a terrible anything. So it is interesting. I wonder if that is just because it's the hardest thing and it's the, like the most in your face thing, especially as our kids are, you know, our kids right now are nine and six. So they're pretty young. I wonder if that starts to fall off as your kids age and you don't have such an, uh, such a integral role in their lives. Like, yes, you're involved in their lives when they're teenagers, but you're not like responsible for 97% of what they're doing. So I wonder if that just gets better with time or if that's always a thing. I don't know. What do you think? I think you're really, I mean, ultimately you're investing and trying to invest your time and energy into something that you hope ends up going really well, Mm -hmm. because if it doesn't, it's not going to work out well for anybody. And so when we talk about, I think we should say this, when we talk about being intentional, we talk about being conscious and deliberate on the decisions you're making. And when it comes to your kids, especially when they're younger, but I think as they get older, to your point, Meg, like it's, it, it gets, it, it, you know, it's the same type of struggles, but it's like a different scenery, right? Mm -hmm. So it's constantly going to be changing. There's constantly going to be things that are different. Like as your kids get into the teenage years, there's struggles there. Like I've talked to parents with teenage kids and there's struggles there when they get into college. Like, I don't think your job's ever really done, but I do think these original years, like their younger years, 10 and under probably, are the foundational years to set those values and instill those things in your kids. And they're the most impressionable, by the way, in those moments too. Uh, you know, kids like a sponge, you know, they're taking all of it in. So with each decision you make, with each thing you're doing, with each thing you're putting in front of your kids, which anymore becomes even more of a challenge of all the different crazy stuff that's out there, man, you got to be so intentional and you have to be so conscious in what you're doing. And so I can't wait to unpack all of this today because this is going to be one heck of a (laughs) heck of a little episode here. (laughs) Well, I think we have to start where it all starts, right? I think we have to prioritize communication. I think it's really important that you set early on that your kids understand that you are always going to make communicating with them and talking with them and listening to them a priority in your life. And I think that It's a struggle because we're always so distracted. I was just on social media the other day, and I wish I could remember. I can't. I'm sorry. Who was talking about this? But they said that every single time that your child says, Mommy or Daddy, put down the phone, even if you're going to say, Hey, I need five minutes to do this task. Hey, I need a half an hour to do, like, even if your answer is only to put it off. Don't answer them while you're looking at the phone. And how guilty am I of doing things? of doing things while I'm trying to talk to our kids. Like that's a thing for me. Maybe not so much on my phone because I'm usually not on my phone a lot when I'm with the kids, Um, although it does happen. 
but other things will come in, like put fill in the blank, right? So mine might be, I'm doing laundry, so I'm not going to look at you, or I'm cleaning the kitchen, so I'm not going to look at you, or I need to go upstairs and do one of other, you know, five other tasks that have to be done, so I'm not going to give you the time of day right now. It's convicting, though. Mm -hmm. When somebody tells you to put down the phone every single time your kids need your attention, even temporarily, that's a big deal because what you're doing when you actually follow through with that is telling them that they are important and that you matter, that they matter, sorry, excuse me, that they matter to you. And when you do that, when you are able to say, hey, I want to listen to this story. I just need five minutes to finish up what I was already doing. And then you stick to that. That shows them that they can wait for you, that you can, that they can depend on you, that you will be there for them whenever you need them. Maybe not in the immediate second, because as you know, not everything is a fire. Some things are for your kids, but not everything needs to be addressed right in that moment. But you'll eventually come to them. You will be there and you will care about what they have to say. And it won't be a, you know, a uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh kind of care. It will be a real, I am listening to you care. Mm -hmm. It's funny when you said the thing about the phone, because it's like where your, uh, you know, where your attention go is where your affection is. Well, it's like, is your affection for your phone or for your kids? Because I know like that'll rub people the wrong way that like, well, they were there. They, there's nothing wrong with them being on their phone. And then, you know, they have responsibilities and they have things like maybe their job's tied to it, whatever it is. But it's like also what's most important in those moments. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of my least favorite things that my parents always said to me and one of the least favorite things I, I try not to say to our kids, although I am guilty sometimes is the, because I said so like, you need to do that because I told you to, that's it. Like no explanation. One of the things that I constantly try to pose to our kids and it's, it's difficult because they just don't want to hear it or they don't take it in, or it can be frustrating is showing them the cause and effect. Like this is happening. Like I'm like upset because of what you did, because a lot of times they want to play the victim. They want to say, well, you know, my brother did this or the teacher did that or this person did this or you did this. And it's like, that's fine. But I try to show them the cause and effect. So this is this is why we got to this place. Like I try to back it up and be like, this is how we got there. And being very clear and you have to be intentional in having that conversation and being clear as far as how you see that you got to that point. Like, yes, I might have yelled or you might have had a circumstance, but in my mind from the way where I sit, you had three different scenarios where I was reminding you nicely and kindly before you decided to step over the line and do that. But by explaining your decisions, by explaining why those rules are in place, they're way more likely to be followed because you can piggyback on them and, and feed and weave in the values of your family in those situations much more clearly than because I said so. Yeah, and I think that ties right into the idea of just setting clear expectations and boundaries. If they can understand where you're coming from, then you have a lot better basis to say, this is how our family runs and here's why. If you've always been consistent in showing them how things are and why things are, then I think you're going to have a very natural ability to set those very clear expectations and for them to understand, well, it's not just because dad said so. It's not just because mom wants it that way. It's because there's an actual reason and here's the reason why. We do this because that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And right. Coupled with that is the positive and negative reinforcement, because like for me, I have to remind myself all the time in life in general, like with our employees at work, with my kids, with with anything that I'm doing that I don't need to focus all on the negative. Like a lot of times it's really easy to say, well, stop doing this, stop doing that. And that's where all of your attention goes. But then when they do it the right way, you don't say anything at all. And it bothers me as an adult when I'm doing something and people don't give some ounce of validation or positive reinforcement for making the right decisions, but then they're willing to nag on all the negative decisions. And so because I don't like that as an adult, when I look at my kids and when I look at being a parent, I try to do the same thing. I fail a lot. Like I said at the top of this episode, I fail a lot, but it's a conscious effort to say, man, you really did a great job on that. Or man, I really appreciate you taking the initiative and going and doing that. Or wow, I asked you to do that and you just did it right away. Those moments might seem small, but those little touch points can add up and fill up the jar so that the next time they know that if they do that, there's going to be something positive with it or at least just some positive feedback because a lot of times you can fall into the habit of being the dictator and constantly nagging and constantly pointing the finger on them. And if you're anything like me, you don't want to be that person. Like I'm not naturally that person. I don't want to be that person. So how can I make it so they want to do 
more positive things. And you can reward them too. I'm all about bribery. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can reward them. I mean, you have to be a little bit careful there because you don't want them to expect that just from common behaviors that you expect. But those are all in the conversations that you have throughout the whole process. But in, in setting those clear boundaries, it just becomes even more evident to them. It's not just you saying it, you're actually acting it out and living it out, which is a big difference than just speaking the words. And I think that as your kids get used to you kind of implementing the positive reinforcement, the good jobs, the, you know, I noticed you did this and not only re not only responding to the negative things, I think that that gives them a little bit of natural motivation there too to continue on doing that. Like, for instance, our son had a really rough week this week with his spelling words. I mean, we're talking, it was Thursday, Thursday morning, and we were still getting, you know, 10 wrong out of 25 words, kind of a bad week. And the test is on Friday. And I said to him, like, hey, bud, I know that it's been a struggle this week, but we need to practice this more. And he did not like that answer. And he was not going to do it. But something between Thursday morning and Thursday night clicked. And he decided he was going to be dedicated. And so he practiced again on Thursday night. And he practiced again on Friday morning. And by Friday morning, he had resolved those problems. And I told him, I am so proud of you. Because I know that you didn't want to work extra on your spelling list but you realized that you had an issue and that the only way to do it was to keep practicing. And so no matter the outcome of this test today, you worked hard, you did the best job that you could, and you put in the effort. That was all you. I am so proud of you because those things matter. For, for a six-year-old to make the right decision on something that he really doesn't want to do because he realizes the impact of hard work, the impact that he'll have on his self-worth, the impact that he'll have when he realizes that what he sets out to do, he can do and what he wants to focus on, he can focus on. I think that matters. And for me to step in there and say, hey, I see you, I appreciate you, and I am proud of you, will only increase the chances that in another similar situation, he'll do the same thing. He'll want to make those choices again because he realizes the positive impact it has on him and on our relationship. Yeah, it's beautifully put. And I just want to pause here for a second and say that our kids are younger. They're nine and six. But this this goes through any age that your kids are. Like, don't tune out because you feel like we're talking specifically about our kids and younger kids. If your kids are older or your kids are out of the house, whatever. The fact is, a lot of these things, like, as people, we all want to be seen and heard. We all want to be, like, given clear expectations for what is expected of us. Or we all want to have... The next thing I'm going to touch on here, which is for someone to spend quality time with us. So I know as your kids get older, the reason that came to my mind is because I looked at that next point and I, I think as your kids get older, you think, well, they don't want anything to do with me. They don't think I'm cool anymore. They, you know, they don't want to be around. It still makes an impact. It still does. I know when I was like growing up, it, I, I acted that way too, but I still wanted my parents to be active and I still wanted them to care. And the greatest memories I have are when they did that. And when we had those times, even though in the time, in that time frame, no one would have expected that I would have felt that way. So this came up, this has come up multiple times recently, but this came up very large in my life recently because uh, my son and I joined a Y guides troop. So the YMCA does a Y guides troop. It's kind of like Boy Scouts, but you do all kinds of different activities with your dad. The main thing is it's for boys or girls just to spend time consistently with your dad. And there's plenty of statistics to support the, the need for quality time with your dad in the home, not just mom. And I get mom gets a lot of the attention. We love mom, but dad makes a huge impact and plays a huge role as well. So my son had found out about this Y guides in school. And I was like, man, I, I don't want to do this. I, I don't want to do this. Oh, I don't want to do it. It's not that I didn't want to spend time with him, but I know there's like outdoor activities, there's different things. And like, honestly, I dodged the bullet with our daughter and I thought maybe I could do it again. Well, it was very apparent to me that he wanted to do it. And so I had the decision to make as a busy dad, as a busy person who's trying to do a thousand different things, do I take on something else to do? And so I, I backed up and I thought more about, am I taking on something else to do or am I doing something that's actually going to make an impact on my relationship with my son? Investing. Yes. It, is my time invested going to pay dividends? And ultimately I was like, it will. So fast forward to this past weekend, we 
went out for the Y Guides fall retreat. It's like out in the woods in the middle of nowhere at some campground. You do all kinds of different activities. Even leading into it, I was like, oh, it's going to be really fun, but I'm not looking forward to it. I just don't know what to expect. I don't want to go out there. I don't want to do this. It's going to take the whole day. I even had thoughts, I'll, I'll be real honest, of, man, there's a great football game that day. I really wish I didn't have to miss that. And I even said that to you, Meg. Mm-hmm. And then I got out there and I had the experience. And I'm I'm literally going to get emotional talking about it because <sighs> I got to see, um, I got time that I would never get. I got to see my, oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I got <laughs> to see, <laughs> I got to see my son <clears throat> shoot a BB gun for the first time, shoot a bow and arrow for the first time. I got to go out in a canoe with me for the first time. I'd never even been in a canoe. I got to go out and paddle a canoe with a six-year-old, which <laughs> is an experience in and of itself. I hope y'all see by my emotion that it makes a difference. It makes an impact. It makes an impact to a 38 year old man. And I know it made an impact to my six year old son because gosh, I'm dying here. (laughs) (laughs) Keep going. I believe in you. Because when we left and we were on the drive home and we had done every single thing that is fun in the world he said that the best part of his day was spending time with me. And y'all, I mean, what other impact can you make? The point is quality time makes a difference. It makes the most important impact that you can make. And a lot of times we're so busy, we're too busy to see it because we have a thousand things on our plate. And look, I get it. I get it. I always have a thousand things on my mind, a thousand things on my plate, and a thousand more important places to be. But I would argue, based on the way I'm feeling right now and the emotion that you hear in my voice, that there's nothing else that I would have done in that time to make a bigger impact in my life and my son's. I don't even know if I can talk right now. (laughs) Do I have the lump in my throat? I'm like, okay, calm down. Get your eyes under control. I mean... Wow, you it's not like we haven't talked about it. Like <laughs> I obviously was there when you got home. I was there the next day when we talked about it. Um, yeah. I mean, quality time matters. Uh one of the most convicting things for me in all of this is when you share that, I think about how often our kids will say, Mommy, can you play with me? Mommy, will you play a game with me? Mommy, we haven't played Barbies in a really long time. When can we do that? And I am forever trying to get out of that, guys. I know this is a horrible thing. I'm going to tell you anyway. It's like I would rather clean a toilet than play Barbies. I would rather scrub baseboards than play superheroes. Like, I just don't want to sit on the floor and play. I did that when I was young. I'm late 30s. Barbies and superheroes and playing on the floor are not my interest anymore. But dang, they want that from me. And so sometimes, sometimes I do say no, but I'm trying really hard to sometimes say yes to. And I find that it's easier to say yes on things that I like a little bit more. Like I'm more, I'm more apt to say yes to a board game than I am to play Barbies because I just like board games a little bit better. But even still, last weekend, I specifically sought out my daughter and I said, Har, do you want Har? It's such a weird nickname, but it's half of her name. So that's what we call her sometimes. Do you want to play Barbies? And her eyes lit up like it was Christmas morning. Like that was really in a, in a whole day of things that we could have done. Barbies was exciting. Like getting to shut me in her room with her and play Barbies until we couldn't play Barbies anymore was so impactful to her. And that's the kind of stuff where it's like, it's so hard for me to remember in the moment because I don't want to sit down and do it. I don't want to waste time and do it because that's how my brain thinks of it. Well, that's a waste of time. I could be doing 16 other things right now and that's what I should be doing. And playing Barbies is not going to promote or progress anything in this household, but it does. Mm -hmm. And I would challenge you to start thinking the same way too. It does matter. Yeah, it's not the most fun thing for a mom or a dad to sit on the floor and play something with their kids. But that's the kind of moment they're going to remember forever. 
that mommy and daddy sat down and we played a game together. Or mommy and daddy took us on this amazing trip and all we did the whole time was have fun together as a family and spend time together as a family. Whether it's big or small, doesn't matter because the time spent together is what's important. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't say it any better. I think the, the, the last thing I really wanted to touch on is, and it, and it seems weird in this conversation, but focusing on your own self-care. Because if you want to show up as the most intentional parent, then you have to take care of yourself first. And that can seem counterintuitive because we've been talking about how the need to be there for your kids, the need to support them, the need to uh, give them the, th- the values and everything else that they need to progress in life. But if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not going to show up well for them either. And so I've noticed that firsthand, like if I'm not taking care of myself, like doing regular exercise, like doing things that matter to me, like tonight I'm going to go to a hockey game with some other dads, doing things that get me to take care of myself and be like, I am an individual person. Like, yes, I am caring for my family, but I'm also an individual who has needs as well. That I cannot, I can say it until I'm blue in the face. That is not selfish. If you want to show up the best way you can for everyone else, then you have to take care of yourself. And when you take care of yourself, I find that I show up so much better for my family and everyone else because I'm not distracted. I'm not worn out. I'm not tired. I'm not going in a million different directions. I'm there and I'm intentional with the time I have because I've refilled my tank before I got there. Yeah, I mean, I would add to that and I'm not resentful because for me, if I'm if I'm not able to go running, if I'm not able to take care of myself in the way that I know I should be, it's like I can't do as good of a job taking care of others because I'm resenting the fact that I even have to do it in the, in the first place. Whereas if I had taken that 15 or 30 minutes or whatever the case may be, just to reset myself, I have a way higher tolerance for all of it. I... I know that I've taken care of myself, so then I can go pour out onto them. Then I can have a bigger threshold for all the things that come with raising kids and having a spouse and all that. And it's just, it's hard work sometimes, and it feels like a lot. But if you've set yourself up for success, then you can just tolerate and and have a lot more going on around you without falling apart. But I do fall apart when I don't take time for myself because I'm just irritated more easily. I'm just stressed out more easily. I'm freaked out more easily, and it just feels like everything is going crazy around me, and all I want to do is retreat. So it's super important, even when we know that we need to be there for our kids, even when we do know that we need to spend more time with the kids and put our phones down and all those things that we're also being there for ourselves being there in those moments when we understand that the only way to move forward is to take a step back right now Mm -hmm. and maybe retreat for five minutes and gain our composure so that we don't do something we regret, so that we don't make a lasting impact in a negative way on our kids. Because if the whole goal here is to be intentional and to set up our children for success and to instill good values and and to make them into the productive humans that we want them to be eventually when they go out on their own, then we need to set that up. And the way to set that up is to simply do it with love do it with patience and do it with care. And that starts with us. Yeah. Like I said, right off the top, I mean, you're, I fail at this more than I fail at anything else. Maybe you find yourself, maybe you're counting yourself as a failure right now when it comes to being a parent. Maybe you know you could do a better job, but you really haven't been. Maybe you think it's lost or it's too far gone. Maybe your kids are older and you just think you've, you've lost that chance that you can't repair it. It's never too late until it's too late. So you have time. You can make those decisions now. You can make conscious decisions to invest in something that's more meaningful than a lot of the other things that we tend to distract ourselves with. Don't give up. Keep pushing through. If you need us, we're always here. You can uh, reach out to us over on Instagram at Growth Reframed. We love y'all. We'll see you next week.